Howdy. My name is Adrian, but you can call me Coco. Uh, I'm just making a quick vlog, sort of as a an acknowledgement that I've reached 50 subs, which I want to start out by thanking all of you. Those of you who have been around for a while and stuck around, those of you who are new, just thank you for caring about what I make. That's it. I don't have any other words. <laughs> Another thing I wanted to talk about for this occasion, my AC just came down the line. Shut up. I wanted to let you all know a little bit more about me, because I've introduced myself a dozen times, but that doesn't mean you know who I am. And who I am is just a dude, just some kid. I call myself a kid, but I'm almost 26 years old, and I like video games, and I of Mario, as you can tell. <laughs> I'm just a nerd. I exist. <laughs> no, but really, in order to get personal, I'm going to tell you something about myself. Those of you who know me personally, you already know this, but the rest of you who don't, I'm a trans man. And that's my official announcement. Excuse me, I dropped something. I have like seven of these flags because my sister bought me a whole pack. <laughs> In case you were wondering, yes, I get asked all the typical questions like how do you know or why would you want to change the way that you were born. I mean, we can go through the motions and I can give you detailed explanations, but instead I'm just going to tell you what I've learned so far in my own experience of being trans. For people who aren't trans and even for people who are and just have not gone through any of the treatment yet, uh, I'll just tell you from my point of view what I've experienced. Maybe you can relate to it, maybe you won't. That's fine. First, I'm going to talk about my treatment. If talking about needles, thinking about them makes you uncomfortable, please skip to this point in the video. Every two weeks, I take an intramuscular injection in either my right or left thigh. It's only half a milliliter, but it can be nerve wracking. Like, I still get scared doing my own injections, even though I've done them for over a year. I've been on testosterone for a year and almost seven months to the day. And I mean, everything can go right. Have it all set up, unwrapped, uh, have my leg sterilized and ready for the injection. And I go and put the needle in and inject and something can still end up going wrong. That's totally normal. Like I can do everything perfectly. But if I'm off by like two milliliters on that golden spot on my thigh, it can bleed or the injection itself can start to leak out like the oil that I inject. And that's that happens. It's natural. I mean, I've been doing this for over a year and I'm still alive, so <laughs> I must be doing something right, even if it hurts sometimes. Uh, quick note, if you do do like... Do -do. <laughs> if you do injections, you need to know like... A safe way to dispose of needles. I just use an empty Arizona tea jug because my sister loves Arizona tea and they are super thick plastic. They're easily sealed and unsealed and they don't have as much of a, a likelihood of like tipping over and accidentally spilling needles on the floor because it's a closed neck bottle. I would recommend it if you're gonna do that. Otherwise I have trans friends who they just do you know epidermal cream that delivers testosterone through the skin. I haven't really scripted this out. I'm just kind of winging it. Uh, excuse me. It's not a video if I don't burp at some point. Uh, next point of order. When I first started testosterone, one of the first things that I noticed was that the way I smelled was very potent. And uh, there's actually an account that I follow on Instagram called Marokuchi, an excellent icon uh, Drag King, I love them. They have a, a, a video or a reel or something talking about this exact subject where when you're fresh on hormone therapy, you might notice that even after you shower, you scrub yourself really well, you get out of the shower, and a minute later you're like, you smell awful. That's normal. It's your biology changing. You're going to smell funny to yourself, but that is the way you smell now. The way that I smelled at first, I was like, I'm not sure if I like this, but I'm used to it now. I don't smell myself anymore. I shower regularly to make sure that I don't get overwhelming, because obviously body odor is a problem now. Not that it wasn't before, but it's worse now. 
I'll try to stay out of the nitty gritty details, especially in this next part, because I'm going to talk about my hair growth. I personally don't have like a terrible lot of hair. You can't really see it here. My arms are just kind of fuzzy. My legs are a lot more fuzzy. Rolling chairs are not a good place to expose your legs, but a lot of them. And uh, as for the hair on my head, well, fortunately, I'm not really experiencing any balding. Balding is genetic, so there is a chance that it could happen in the future, because the men on my mom's side of the family have an issue with balding. Unfortunately, both sides of my family have awful facial hair growth. I have, like, peach fuzz here and here, and, like, you can not really see it on camera, but there's a little patch here, too. I hope to grow a beard. I'm gonna look into, like, I see people with those skin perforating face rollers all the time. Emotions and mood. They say that when your hormones are out of sync, and uh, imbalanced that you get mood swings, and it's true. There will be times where just out of nowhere, irrationally, I'll either be sad or angry, and thankfully, I'm very grateful to have like this ability to kind of sit beside myself and try to work out why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling. A lot of the times I can rationalize it to, oh, well, this person said this thing and it made me uncomfortable, or... I did this and it didn't go over well and I just feel like I'm not able to do things properly like it's a self-conscious thing but most of the time if I can't rationalize it to something like that it's just the hormones it is only the hormones there is no reason for me to be feeling the way I'm feeling also fortunately I have my acting coach her name is Jennifer Sue Rockwell if you happen to live in like the New England area and you're looking for an acting coach, I would recommend her. She's the lady to talk to. We have sort of the same vibe when it comes to like spirituality and meditation. She taught me about grounding myself. Grounding yourself is a an integral skill to have if you're going to be uh, on hormones that are going to really mess with your emotional state. I can't explain it all very thoroughly in a short time frame, but in gist, you sit yourself down, you take a minute to meditate, and meditation doesn't have to be like sitting in a yoga pose on top of a mat with like nobody around you. Meditation can be as simple as you sit down, you breathe, close your eyes for a second, and you focus on your senses, sound, smell, taste, touch, and sight. And once you feel like you've got all of those things sort of calibrated, you, you feel like you're in the most calm, neutral state you can possibly be, you choose a word or a phrase to be your grounding word. And what that does is you give that word the power to bring you back to this physical state. No matter what you're doing, no matter where you are, you can say, or think this word or phrase to yourself. It can even be a song. When you think it or say it to yourself, then it brings you back to this mellow state of being. It may not work for everybody. It works for me. Emotions are tricky, fickle little things. To round off, I'll go real quick. Like, obviously, the change that you've noticed about me if you've been around for a while is I sound sexy. I'll probably insert a clip of what I used to sound like. One Punch Man is an anime, it's art! I don't like it. Yeah, my voice has dropped several octaves. I like this change. This is a change that I noticed within a few weeks of taking testosterone. In the beginning, yes, my voice was cracking a lot, and I wasn't sure how deep it would get. I'm happy with as deep as it's gotten. I heard a story about a friend of mine has an ex who started like testosterone therapy and realized that it wasn't for them as soon as they started to notice their voice dropping. So that, that can be a big deal breaker for some people. Also, my weight distribution. When I was first on testosterone, I blew up. Excuse me. I didn't get very, very heavy, but I got like around 185 
which is the heaviest that I've ever been. And thankfully now I've kind of like leveled it out. I've been watching my diet and stuff I'm back down to about 170 and my curvature has changed. The weight that I put on has distributed itself differently than it, it used to before I started therapy. To sort of finish this point off, I'm about to lose a lot more weight because, surprise announcement, in about a week and a half, I'm going to be having my top surgery. And I'm excited for that. Finally going to be able to go out in public presenting myself as masculine and hopefully not get misgendered because that's been a big issue for me. But that's all that I'm going to say about it because I don't want to get any deeper in this than I have. So yeah, now you know a little bit more about me and I have social media. I never plug my social media. I should do that. Instagram. I used to use Twitter all the time. I don't. Now, <laughs> not since Elon's uh, siege. I'll call it a siege. That seems like a polite term for it. All right. I don't know what else to say. Bye.